Good morning. Woo. Uh, welcome to the worship service here at the Snellville United Methodist Church. We are glad that you've joined with us in person, and we are also blessed if you've joined with us online. We are the body of Christ, and we represent Christ's love to those that we meet. So when we leave this space or we leave our homes, as we encounter people in our community, as we encounter co-workers, may we all share the love of Christ that Christ has offered to each one of us. We are glad you're here this morning. If you're in person, I want to invite you to pass those black pad folios down the pew and to record your attendance. And if you're online, there is a link in the comment section for you to click on to register your attendance as well. We are just happy that everyone is here today and worshiping our God together. A few announcements want to let you know um, that uh, we are having one service on October the 2nd. October the 2nd at 10.30 in the sanctuary. So you, you've already got the right space, but you need to come early. 10.30. We're going to have 10.30 on October the 2nd. We're going to be celebrating together World Communion Sunday um, as we remember that our Lord's table is not a denominational table, nor is it an individual church table, but it's the table of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we will be coming together for World Communion Sunday, October 2nd at 10.30 here in the sanctuary. As you uh, watch the news, you understand the need for flood buckets. And UMCOR, United Methodist Committee on Relief, is a wonderful mission of the United Methodist Church. And it responds to um, natural disasters in um, our country and world. And one of the ways that we can help serve this special mission is to provide the items that are needed for those flood buckets. We're collecting here at the church three specific items, liquid laundry detergent, concentrate household cleaners, no spray bottles. Think about it this way. If it's in a bucket and it has a sprayer on it, what happens? You have a mess. So uh, no, uh, no spray bottles and dish soap. Um, you can donate until September the 23rd, and um, if it, it, it says here we are donating them into Wesley Hall, but if you get them to the fellow, if you get them here in the gathering room, we will make sure they continue their way to Wesley Hall. Um, and we are looking for volunteers if you are interested, ages 12 and up. If you're interested in assembling some of these flood buckets at the warehouse, um, there's an, in the event section of our website, there's a place where you can sign up. We're not going as a, as a, you know, in, as one car or anything, but we can if y'all want to find some people to carpool down to the warehouse. Um, but sign up the Thursday and um, Saturday of that same week of the due date, 22nd and 24th. All right. Who gets hungry after worship? I do. The, uh, the, the men's group is going to be having a barbecue luncheon um, next Sunday, September the 25th. And not only does this fill your body, but that barbecue will also fill your soul because your $12 charge, I, and what I've heard is, I don't eat out a lot, but I've heard that even fast food costs $12. So why not get a good meal? So $12 luncheon, great meal, great calls. The, the men's uh, ministry uses the, the funds that they raise for their mission projects through the entire year. So $12 per adult, $6 for children six or under the age of 12. Um, you can also pre-order a pound of barbecue if you'd like to do that. But you need to do so by September the 23rd by calling the front office. Um, again, good for the soul, good for the body, and we get to eat and fellowship together. 
Let us continue our worship of God together through our call to worship. We are asked to pray, and through our prayers, we can live in peace. May we join in prayer for our political leaders and our spiritual leaders and those who serve around our neighborhoods and the people of our community. As we pray, our heart's desire is for all people to come to know the truth of Christ and the saving grace of our Savior. It is through our prayers that we show we care for others. Amen. Good morning. Please stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 156, I Love to Tell the Story.
speak together our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. our God together we do so in a spirit of prayer and as we join together as the body of Christ as a congregation we are mindful of the concerns that we share those are listed on our our prayer list but we are also aware that there are concerns there are joys that we do not know about but we serve and we worship a God who knows our God knows each one of our hearts because he lovingly created each one of us and he hears us whether we speak the concerns out loud or whether we keep them on our hearts. Our God hears us and may we hear our God. Let us prepare for prayer. Dear God of grace, we come to honor and to praise your holy name. We enter knowing and acknowledging that we are imperfect. And it's in our imperfectness that we strive to be perfected by your love. Your love that carries us, your love that delivers us, your love that redeems us, sustains us, encourages us, forgives us. Dear God, allow us to be perfected in your love. Allow us grace as we long to serve you with a grateful heart. Allow us grace and forgiveness as we bring to you our sinfulness. Where we fall short, dear God, we know that you are the strength to pull us back up. And dear God, as we share with you our concerns and our praises, May we each extend compassion to a hurting world. It is through compassion, it is through our prayers that we show others that we truly care. Dear God, be with us as we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the spirit of worshiping our God together, as God has blessed each one of us with gifts, with talents, we offer back to God our tithes and our offerings. I want to invite our ushers to come forward as we share with God our offering this morning here in person. If you're online, there's a link in the comments section if you would like to give. And as always, uh, if you would like to mail your check or reoccurring giving, those are great options as well. But as we consider our, our monetary offerings back to God in our prayers, let us also think about the talents that we have to give back to God. It is through our talents and through our time and our service that we serve God's church. Let us pray. Dear loving and all gracious God, we ask that you bless these gifts that we give. May we be good stewards of them. May we use them to allow others to come to know more about your son, Jesus the Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Broken down the wall. 
so good to see you here in person. And those of you that are watching across the country online, I'm Quincy Brown, and I get to be the pastor of this church. And what a thrill it is to be the senior pastor of this church. I am so grateful to serve a church like this, a church where we welcome all people into a growing relationship with Jesus. Has God been good to you this week? I know sometimes the week is a little long, and for some of you, it may be a little difficult. So I want to let you know that we will pray for you. As you have written in your black portfolio, there's a section in there if you're here in person about prayers, and there's a section online that you can do it as well. If you would put your prayer concerns there, we will lift those prayers up for you and with you because nobody was meant to live life alone. And it's only during those difficult times where it is important to know that we're never alone, that we know God is with us, but it sure does make a, a lot of difference knowing that somebody's praying for us. And so if you've had a difficult week, we want to know and we want to pray. We don't want to get all up in your Kool-Aid or up in your business. We just want to know that we're praying for you. We're in a ser uh, sermon series called Connect With Your Neighbor, Doing Life Together. And today we're going to talk about what it means to pray, showing that you care by praying. And so our text for the morning, our Bible lesson for the morning, comes from 1 Timothy chapter 2. And I'll read verses 1 through 7. If you have your Bibles, you are free to read with me. If you have your devices, if you have neither of those, you can read the screen as we will read along. Hear the word of God. First of all, then, I ask that request, prayers, petitions, and thanksgiving be made for all people. Pray for kings and everyone who is in authority so that we can live a quiet and peaceful life in complete godliness and dignity. This is right, and it pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. There is one God, one mediator between God and humanity, the human Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a payment to set all people free. This was a testimony that was given at the right time. I was appointed to be a preacher, an apostle of this testimony. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. I am a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Be to God. There once was a man named Praying John. John earned that nickname because <clears throat> whenever it was time to pray in his church, John was the one to pray. He prayed every Sunday. And John had a routine when he prayed. And John prayed every prayer like this. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thy spirit, where would I go? And he would continue the prayer. Now, John was known for his frequent prayers. John was also known for his long prayers. And at first, it wasn't an issue until people began to complain. People began to make motions with their right or left wrist. People had their eyes bowed but would peek up. And my watch just told me what I found. People would say to the preacher, if John continues to preach this long, we're not going to get out of the church before the other church, and they're going to beat us to lunch. So we need to do something about John's long-winded prayers. And the preacher didn't really have a problem with it because, hey, 
John was a good prayer. Every preacher needs a praying John. One Sunday, John began to pray and prayed for the county commissioner. After that Sunday, the preacher met with the members and they scheduled a trip to John's house. You see, the county commissioner had made a deal with an outside group to reroute traffic from, away from their church to another road that had an extension and a bridge. And the people didn't see as many cars pass by their church, so when they were having bake sales, nobody would pass by. And so you couldn't pray for the county commissioner because he was a bad man for doing this. So the preacher and the members ride out to John's farm. John did not believe in tractors. John had a 25-acre farm, and John would plow that farm with a mule. And John could see the cloud of dust coming because about two-tenths of a mile, the, the asphalt stopped and the rest of it was unpaved dirt road. And John just kind of waited. The preacher and the members got out of the car, and they began to scold John and say, you can no longer pray in our church because you prayed for the county commissioner. And John says, preacher, church folk, let me tell you something. You see, I hadn't always been what I am today. See, I struggle with alcoholism. In fact, there is a broken down steel about 20 yards from here because I dabbled in moonshine. And when I was doing that and my wife passed away, I was estranged from my five sons. They wouldn't talk to me. But one day, Jesus got a hold to me. And I changed my life. And because of that, I pray. Now, preacher, if God can get a hold to me and change, then I think God can get a hold to the county commissioner and change him too. But since you want me to stop praying in your church, would you hold my mule? And I'll pray right here because this is my land that God's blessed me with. And my five children are now reunited with. And I no longer have the taste for the alcohol. So, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thy spirit, where will I go? Praying John shared his story of life change. And that's why praying John prayed the way he did. What about you, friends? Are you sharing your story of life change? In our Bible lesson this morning, Paul is talking to his protege, Timothy. Paul is sharing his life change story with Timothy and giving Timothy instructions on how to turn a church who had turned their back on following Jesus. And Paul is saying that there is one mediator between God and people, and that is Jesus, and this is the truth. And here is the authority that I have to tell you this, that God is the one who called and sent me to tell you. And if God can turn me around like God did with pre praying John, God can turn this church around. And so God sends Paul to tell Timothy to help this church in Ephesus to turn around. 
and he gives them a whole list of instruction. And this morning's Bible lesson, he says, first things first. The first thing you do is start with prayer. The first step is to pray for all people, not just your friends, your enemies, folks you don't know, people in a power and people in authority. Praying John understood this because praying John was praying for the councilman. What about you? Friend, who's on your prayer list? Do you pray for our leaders, whether you agree with them or not? Do you pray for them? Paul says that a good citizen, a good Christian, will pray for those in authority and in power. And he's calling these people in the church of Ephesus who have lost their way to begin to pray. If you don't hear anything else I say this morning, hear this. It's hard to stay mad at somebody when you're praying for them. I want you to try that this week. There won't be any time during this week, this 168-hour week, there will be no time during this week when somebody or something won't rub you the wrong way or irk you or push your buttons. When that happens, I want to invite you to pray. Now, I know everything in you will say, no, that person offended me. That person ought to know. I want you to pray. And when you pray, see what happens. You know what I think will happen? If you're praying, and if you're really praying for that person, it changes you. You know how I know that? Because I do it every week. I have to. And when I'm changed, there's a ripple effect that happens. You see, a changed me is interacting with somebody else, and a changed me stirs a change in you. And a changed you stirs a change in somebody else, and so on, and so on, and so on. Let me invite you to pray for someone. In fact, let me ask you to do an exercise. I know this is going to be uncomfortable, folks, but I know all of you have one of these. I know all of you do. If you have a flip phone, you are excused from this exercise. Those online, you can do this too. Those with flip phones or those that are uncomfortable, I'll give you instructions on what to do because nobody gets away from this one. Okay, so take out your phone right now. I know you got one. Take it out. It's okay. Take it out. Here's what I want you to do. This is part of the sermon, so you got to do it. (laughs) I want you to go into your contacts. I want you to look at three people that you haven't talked to in a while. Now, I know you got at least three. I know you got at least three. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to text those three people right now. And here's what I want you to text them. I'm praying for you. It's okay. You can do that in church. You can pray in church. This is a way to pray. It's okay, folks. It's not gonna, God's not going to strike you dead if you pull your cell phone out and pray for folks. Now, for those of you that are uncomfortable with this, that's okay. You're not going to get away. I want you to write those people's names down. Every last one of you have a bulletin. If you're online, go ahead and pray for those folks by texting. If you have a bulletin, on the back of it, write down three names. And call those people or text them afterwards and say, I'm praying for you. Paul says that the first thing is to pray for folks. And so I'm inviting you to pray for three people. You're going to hear more about this, about praying for people. Why am I asking you to do that? It's because you show that you care for people when you pray for them. 
The greatest way to show that you care for people is by praying for them. And friends, there is nobody in this room or nobody watching online that can't stand a little bit of prayer. And so I invite you to pray. <coughs> and if they respond back, then you begin to say, hey, you know, this crazy preacher of ours asked us to pray for you, and I'm thinking about you, and, and pray for you. And it's okay. Because when you pray for someone, God's power is activated in you to be activated in someone else. And all prayer is, folks, is listening and talking to God on somebody else's behalf. You got your three people. I've heard some pings. Let's see how your week goes when you are praying for folks when you get mad. When we go to God on behalf of someone else, it's the ultimate act of caring. Praying John understood that, and it was uncomfortable. And so, I'm going to pray for you this week. I don't have all your text numbers, but I will pray for you. And in the spirit of praying, John, I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thy spirit, where would we go? Oh, God, I pray for healing. I pray for direction. I pray for patience. I pray for peace. I pray for guidance. I pray for strength. I pray for understanding. I pray that you break the chain of anxiety. I pray that you break the chain of addiction. I pray for healing of mental health. I pray for broken relationships to be restored. I pray for the person in front of us, the person behind us, the person beside us, the person that's not here. I pray for the person that is online watching across the country. I pray for our families. I pray for our schools. I pray for our teachers. I pray for our local leaders. I pray for our regional leaders. I pray for our national leaders. But most importantly, oh God, I ask that you would hear our prayer for Snellville United Methodist Church. May we be a church that shows that we care by praying for others. In Jesus' name, amen. When you pray for someone, you show that you care. When you connect with your neighbors to do life together, the first thing is to pray. And so I encourage you this week that when you find yourself getting irritated, that you just take just a moment and pause. And your prayer can be as simple as, help me, Lord, or my favorite one, Lord, have mercy. And you can say it just like that and shake your hand. Because if you walk in the world that I walk in, you're shaking your head a lot. Lord, have mercy. Mm, mm, mm. That's what my grandmother would say. But I digress. So your homework this week is at the Next Step desk, if you're here in person, there is a discussion guide. If you're online, there is a link that you can follow. You answer the question in the discussion guide. You show that you care by praying for folks. And friends, my greatest desire, hope, is that I'm able to serve a praying church. Because you know what prayer does? Prayer changes things. We're talking about the God of the universe, the creator of the universe that at a word can call things into existence. That's the kind of power I need in my life. And that's the kind of power that is offered to you 
and to me. Those who have ears, let them hear. Please stand as you're able and join me as we sing together this little light of mine. chose to be here in person and watching across the country online. And my prayer for you this week is that God will go in front of you to lead you. May God be behind you to keep you from straying. May God hover above you to protect you. May God drop underneath you to support you. But most importantly, my prayer for you this week is that God will walk beside you because the promise to never, ever leave you. Thank you again for being here. See you next week. You're dismissed. God bless you.